Hi guys, this is Vidya and I hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to talk about some of the most popular parenting misconceptions that are around. Before we become parents, we have this idea of parenting that we'll become this kind of a parent. I know I've had quite a few of these, especially the last one. So let's get started. The first one I want to talk about is that milestones are everything. Now milestones are important in their own place. Like doctors have developed this framework, a timeline so that they can diagnose and treat any conditions that a child can have earlier than later. Like it's better to identify them earlier. But most of the time we stress out about milestones way too much. And these days women are stressing out about not just meeting the milestone but surpassing it and meeting it way before everyone else. That has become very important and that's where it becomes kind of crazy. A lot of changes happen very quickly in babies and toddlers so we might be worrying about one thing not happening and then very next week it might happen. And children have their own timelines obviously. Some might start walking earlier, some might start talking earlier, some might be eating on their own much before they get potty trained and some vice versa right so it's a lot of different things so you can use milestones just like a framework like and then not worry too much about meeting and beating every baby in every milestone it's not a contest it's not a race i wish i hadn't focused so much on milestones and just enjoyed my baby's childhood more instead and the second thing that I want to talk about is kind of controversial and a lot of people believe this is that all internet research is bad and we should just trust our instincts and our doctor and not listen to anything on the internet. I hear a lot of older people saying this who grew up without internet uh, in their lives but as someone who has relied on the internet for a lot of things and it has benefited me a lot I would say that the internet is just information it's not giving you a diagnosis. So it is very wrong to diagnose yourself uh, with a disease or you know worse medicate yourself or your baby based on what you read on the internet. That's obviously not a, a right thing to do but the internet gives you a wealth of information depending on what sources you're looking at. Of course there's going to be advice on the internet that is totally wrong just like there's going to be advice given in the real world that is totally wrong even sometimes by doctors. We've been told to only trust our doctor and our instincts when it comes to parenting. But the truth is my doctor confuses me sometimes and my instincts confuse me all the time. Sometimes my instinct tells me to Google the heck out of it until I find information that I can actually use. This is obviously the age of information and there is nothing wrong with having all the information in the world readily available at our fingertips. It is up to us how we make use of that information. The same thing is usually said about parenting books and I used to think this too like no one can teach us how to parent our kids and parenting books is a lot of unsolicited advice that's what I used to think anyway but I've come to realize that books are kind of like the internet you pick what you find useful and there's a lot of good books there's a lot of bad books and there's some things that are just based on your opinion there are books and resources about every topic under the sun right and whenever we need to learn a new skill we always look for the best course the expert the best books in that subject and kind of invest in that so why not for parenting i know humans have been doing it for thousands of years of course but then uh, don't you think we need to do a better job looking at how our world is right now next misconception that runs rampant in our society is that it's all the mother's fault like mothers already take the blame for everything that happens in a child's life and society kind of reinforces it if a baby falls sick a mother might blame her herself for thinking I didn't breastfeed enough that's why the baby's immune system is not well if the baby is not crawling the mother thinks that I didn't do enough tummy time that's why the baby is not crawling if the baby's speech is delayed the mother blames herself thinking that I had to go to work so I didn't have enough time to talk to my child so that's why the speech is getting delayed so there's so many other things that the mothers blame themselves for and society doesn't help either uh, if a child is behaving badly in a public place, those people always stare at the mother and see what they're doing to stop the child. They never look at the father if you notice. It's always the mother who is at the brunt of all blame for anything that the child does. The truth is there are a lot of factors in raising a child that are out of our hand and we can only do what we think is the best in any given point with what we know, right? So if we can get out of our own heads and stop blaming ourselves, we can actually focus on what we need to do and maybe 
society will also catch on at some point. The next misconception that we commonly have is that there is only one right way of parenting and that is my way. It's so funny because on one hand we have all of these doubts about ourselves and on the other we judge moms who have the same doubts about their own parenting, right? No two children are the same and no two parents can raise their children exactly the same. There are thousands of decisions that we all take and so if we can think of a parenting resume with all the things that you did from the day your child was born there will be some changes somewhere like you like breastfeeding or formula feeding um, staying at home with your child uh, once your maternity leave is done or going back to work at six weeks or self-feeding or uh, you know baby led weaning or uh, puree feeding uh, co-sleeping or sleeping in the crib sleep training or not sleep training and so it's impossible that another parent will have the same exact parenting resume as yours on the surface we may not say anything we'll be like oh yeah to each their own but subconsciously we are constantly comparing and thinking who did a better job and as our children get older what they do with their life like their accomplishments or lack thereof they're always a reflection of what we did as parents to them. So I hope this misconception that there's only one right way of parenting, even though it's not said in those words, it's very subliminal. I hope this goes away soon because it's not doing any service to us as parents. This last one is, is a little surprising and I've had this for many years, which is that a strong mother needs to be a certain way, whichever way it is for you. So I've seen a lot of people say that I've been raised by a strong mother and I always wonder what the definition of a strong mother is. Is. is it that she should be at the at the top of her career she should have started a business a successful you know um, enterprise or something is it that she should have faced a lot of challenges and come out of it is she opinionated and loud and puts her arguments forth bravely or is she quiet and patient and absorbs everything and doesn't react is is her strength her silence is she sacrificing just she put everyone else first and sacrifice her own needs or does she put herself first and sometimes sacrifice the needs of her family or does she find the impossible balance between these two what is the definition of a strong mother it's important to think about this because we all have our own uh, you know idea of a strong mother and we are constantly trying to live up to that and when we don't we kind of get disappointed so it's important to identify what it is we are trying to live up to and see if it's really correct you know like for me I used to have this idea that a strong mother needs to uh, be a certain way but we are all individuals right so why should we try and fit ourselves into this box that has been defined by society as a strong mother or a good mother um, and try to mold ourselves into that box why not be our own unique selves so what do you think a strong mother should be like I would love to hear your definitions of a strong mother and whether we even need a definition um, um, and also other misconceptions that you might have had or you might have seen other people having. I would love to have this conversation going in the comment section below. So do leave me a comment down below and I'll see you in one of my next videos. Until then, take care. Bye.